Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to another Decorate With Me. My name's Alessandra, and today we are continuing on our Bridgerton balls from season one in anticipation for the upcoming season two. And without further ado, I would like to get into it because I'm really excited about this ball. Now, I don't think there's an official family associated with this ball in the movie, but I'm going to be calling it the Art of the Swoon Ball because, I mean, let's be honest, that's pretty much uh, what this episode is known for. Um, this is quite a memorable ball, in my opinion, in the sense that uh, obviously there's some major characters here and the decor is definitely a little bit more, it's not let's say Lady Danbury glamorous with all the candles and it's not Trowbridge Ball or it's super dramatic kind of masquerade black and white but this is a really interesting representation of I'm assuming the spring summer type season that they're experiencing in London so we have crazy amounts of cherry blossoms like you can see here as part of the entrance that the guests walk down and uh hopefully you've seen this because there was quite the entrance made by Daphne here so it's definitely an iconic uh moment this look with the feathers the whole white gown like that's she chose that outfit specifically to show up and make an impression and I, I mean definitely did uh, obviously it caught the eye of the prince uh spoilers uh, so there's just a lot going on, but I really liked that in addition to the robin egg blue kind of light turquoise we're seeing in the background, um, almost Tiffany, it kind of depends what lighting we're seeing it in. I like that there's kind of a mix of the creams, she's wearing white, but we see here in the flower, uh, it's a kind of an arrangement, an urn, uh, there's some beautiful kind of amber chocolatey mahogany brown we see white white we see kind of cream we see a little bit of ivory there was this very brief moment at the beginning of the uh episode where you there was a whole cherry blossom i'm assuming kind of swag something arched draping them down the cherry blossoms and this is the uh area we were just looking at over here so you could see a smaller ballroom but very beautifully decorated i just like the contrast of the kind of darker i don't know if it's mahogany walnut type wood and then the brighter colors it's kind of smoky in there and i liked that so i liked um where they were going and i wanted to keep on with it i think the important thing with the details though is even though there's a lot of floral involved daphne is still sparkling like literally got i'm assuming some level of sequins or glitter sparkle something in her dress She's got a little bit in her hair and then the feathers uh if you watch this series or even read the books i think i think it's in the books but the feathers are kind of like an ongoing um commentary about women and their place in society and the men kind of acting like peacocks and it's just like a whole thing so i thought oh that was a nice touch of throwing that in there so i was like we're gonna work with that so our color palette that we're gonna be working with is a combination of whites ivories creams it's mixed and matched here well and i think the setting leans itself to that very easily and then this is a little tricky it, if you're looking to match these colors i would highly recommend using any and all of these uh in your searches robin's a blue turquoise tiffany blue seafoon blue uh when i was looking for elements to make this design happen i used all of these search terms because it really just depends on who made the listing <laughs> <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're searching for things and uh chocolate walnut like we see in the banisters the floor the detail we see some in the the back sides of some of the magnolia leaves so it kind of helps balance out that brightness so these are the colors that we're going to be reining in in using as our focus today and i thought okay we've done a lot of weddings or nighttime you know soiree type parties so we're going to do a spring soiree Focusing on an afternoon function with essentially robin eggs blue and white as our primary colors and then our our nice chocolate browns are going to be our accents and so moving forward I'm going to be calling it a soiree but this could easily be a luncheon a bridal shower a baby shower a birthday party I mean or you know just a ladies get together whatever you want um, so keep that in mind this is if you're going to do this at night, the only thing I think you would really need to add is probably a little bit of crystal and a little bit of candles and it'd be pretty good to go. So now the photo area, I 
that was what got me initially was this moment here, this entrance we saw, I mean, that's what kicked off this whole ball. And I think it's very impactful and I think it's actually quite unique as far as backdrops go because we've all seen um, plenty of variations of flower walls with names and monograms and whatnot in it. But this is kind of a different take on using flowers. So I thought, okay, we can do something with all of this. And I love these urns. You've seen me use the urns <laughs> in various other capacities. And uh, I really think this series does urns justice. And I hope they come back and style a little bit more because they're kind of a classic. So the first thing I started with was my curtains. Now I'm taking a DIY point of view from this. So if you have to source everything yourself, you're making everything yourself. So if you're going to go to an event designer locally, um, by all means, feel free to send them this link and they'll be like, this is what we're going for. But if you are going to try to DIY this, which I might add is very, very reasonable to do. It does not take a huge skill set if you're doing this on a smaller scale. That being said, if you're going to try to do it yourself, all of the links to the specific elements that I use to curate this design is all going to be linked down below so you can get the exact items I reference. I get stuff from all over the internet. Um, so just, you know, whatever I found that made sense is what goes in there. <laughs> okay. So pocket rods. I have that on this screen because I, I'm telling you, I want you to hear it. I want you to read it. And hopefully you'll remember this when you're searching. Pocket rods are really important because we don't want the big grommet hooks, um, like the circles that you see showing and exposing your bar at the top because you're going to have to have some sort of pipe and drape um, base kit or something to hang this on most likely or even a regular curtain rod like if you somehow have the perfect spot in your house or whatever you don't want the rod showing or really any of your hardware when you're making a good photo booth somewhere that's going to be a bunch of pictures nobody wants to see the hardware so when you're looking for curtains make sure they have pocket rods because that is what's going to hide the hardware. Okay. And, and rant. So I found this cherry blossom garland in white from Shop Wild Things. And they say that you can extend them by adding on to them. So I was like, perfect. So I went ahead and just took this image and made my own garlands. But I thought, okay, we're getting pretty close to the, uh, the look over here. Uh, and now obviously if you wanted to do like a flat wall and just paint it or something and that you could do too but like nobody has time for that and if you like these colors you could reuse the curtains in your home or something afterwards all right so we have the backdrop we have beautiful cherry garlands you can just make them to the length of whatever you need or whatever your curtains are and then i was like okay i really like these urns they're really pretty they're simple so i went ahead and modified kind of the urn combination that i've been using previously because it's honestly pretty similar so I took the um, this garland, uh, magnolia garland that I found on Shop Wild Things because it said it was bendable, and I was like, that's great because you can get magnolia sprays, but I thought if it's bendable, you can kind of shape it, you know, and have it going up and down and get some dimension that way and sneak it through, and that could actually, if you get a couple of them and you do that, it could actually be pretty cool, and I've done that before, uh, let's say in real life, <laughs> and it can definitely work out um, really beautifully to help fill in and make everything look more full. Now I just, I have, you know, a cluster of roses here, but I think just mixing in different types of white or ivory roses and some wisteria dangling. Um, if you have some, uh, I use some hydrangea later on, but I just thought for the purposes of the, um, the photo booth roses were probably going to be really pretty and stand out extra fancy. So looking at what we have here, We've, I've got two little urns, and obviously you could get urns in a lot of different shapes and sizes. These just are a good size for what I was doing. And then I found this bench because there's this white bench here. It's kind of like a white beige linen bench. I looked all over online, couldn't find one that I really liked that didn't have the distrust kind of vibe going because I was like, nobody's going to have anything distrust in this mansion here. <laughs> so... This is the closest one I could find, and I do kind of like that it's sort of cream because if everything else is white and then you're sitting on it, the cream's going to kind of help make everything pop a little bit more, maybe a little, you know, because there's a lot of white. So I thought this is kind of nice. 
Um, is this my favorite bench for the look? No, but I, you get where I'm going for. I, you know, nice kind of simple cushions. That way you could have a nice posed, you know, moment. And I thought, you know, could be photo booth, could be party favor related, but if you wanted to go the extra mile and get some extra details, get a handful of these feather fans. <laughs> They're pretty inexpensive depending on how many you need uh, online. And I thought that's just a nice little extra touch to put in there. Uh, especially if this is like a nice luncheon outside or something in the springtime, this could be really pretty. And so photo booth area done, photo area done, because especially if this is a shower or a party or birthday, you know, the guest of honor wants to have nice pictures with their individual guests or the hostess wants to make sure she captures uh, everybody who came and have that moment together. So this is a great way to start the, the, um, the design concept. And I thought, okay, well, we need a dessert bar. And so this is kind of where it started. You can't tell because it's white on white here, but the tablecloths that you see here are essentially two rectangular tables that have a white sequined uh, tablecloth over them. And then I put this beautiful kind of weeping cherry blossom tree on it. But bear with me because there's a lot of blue going on up here and I thought, okay, how are we going to bl move blue into a dessert bar or our buffet, whatever, you know, our lunch spread. And so this cherry, uh, weeping cherry blossom tree from Shop Wild Things has interchangeable branches and you can put whatever color or finish you want that they have in it. But I liked this blue. It's a little bit unusual because it's a blue rose and obviously that's not a you know, it's not technically a natural thing in the in the world, if you will, but I thought it's a nice way to incorporate some of the blue in here. And even if it's not necessarily that same brighter blue, I just thought it was a nice pop of blue, especially when there's the white at the bottom and then, the you know, the sequins kind of sparkle a little bit. And I just thought, you know, it'd be, it's a nice, um, nice focal piece. And then you don't really have to put a lot else on the buffet other than the food. Now, of course, if you're doing this buffet yourself, um, you or even not, your professionals should know better, but you're going to want to cover the base with either food or get uh, some sequin. You can get another sequin tablecloth, maybe at a smaller size and just gather it at the bottom, depending if they're doing elevations on the tables. Um, and that means like, you know, making some food higher, putting boxes under the tablecloth or whatever to help um, just make some contrast in the, the different foods that you see. Uh, they'll figure out a clever way to, to hide that base. Now, I went ahead and figured, okay, if we're DIYing this to yourself, how are you going to decorate this? Now, you could use the boxes, like I said, to elevate the table, but I know that's a little intimidating for everybody, so I thought, okay, if we were just complete noobs, what would we get? And I liked the idea of mixing a little bit of marble with some nice dark wood serving platters because, one, you don't see it very often. Uh, two, I like that they're wood, so you could reuse them, and if this is potentially a style that you like in your home, or maybe somebody else's home that you're helping out, um, these are really nice. So it's sustainable in the sense that it's not one-time use, and you could reuse these, hopefully, for parties in the future. So we have everything from nice wood cake stands to this little cloche uh, moment here. And this is actually, if I recall correctly, I believe this um, cake stand, this is an acrylic cover not glass and I believe this cheese one is glass with marble so um, they do make them with non-breakable elements these days and then I love things like this where we see the fruit and cookies and whatnot because this is just a nice tiered uh, set of two uh, trays and they're raised up a couple inches so you have a little bit of change so if you scatter some of the higher pieces with some of the lower things like these boards that that could be really nice and then just for fun, especially with lunch functions or afternoon functions, I like having um, something that guests can kind of grab and go and just walk around if they're networking or chatting or whatever, and they don't have to get their hands dirty necessarily. So things like these little ice cream home cone holders, you don't have to have ice cream cones in it, but you could have like a little trail mix or some berries or something fun, just little kind of nibbly stuff that they could take with them, or you could leave them empty and they could make their own little to-go snacks while they're walking around. So what does that look like more formally? Well, potentially something like this. And this helps bring in the blue, it helps bring in the white, and it helps bring in that nice chocolate for contrast. And I think that um, is what makes this look really more, um, 
I would say elegant, but it, I think it just makes it look a little bit more curated, a little bit more refined than just the blue and the white. And if you are doing this in your own home or maybe like a small banquet hall, you don't have to use glass and plastic if you don't want to. There are paper options. And so I found these cool uh, paper napkins in the right color palette. And then these are, I think they're more of like a plasticky finish plate, um, but they're a nice color. They're, they're in a little bit nicer quality. They have a little bit of a gold rim on them. So if you don't want to go full paper paper, but you want something kind of nice in between, that might be an option. So let's talk tablescapes. In a lunch function, you do not need to have a whole lot on the table. A tablecloth and a simple centerpiece is more than adequate. So as we start the tablescapes, I want to start with the simplest one I have for this look. And we're talking about this easy Robin's Egg taffeta, uh, crinkle taffeta tablecloth. So a nice statement, a little pop of color with this and then a simple ceramic pot with a cherry blossom tree and that's already packaged ready to go so you just have to buy it get it home do a quick fluff and put it on the table and a little ivory napkin like this uh, and I, I like ivory satin with this look I think a white satin a pure white would be just a little bit too crisp and with all the different layers of creams whites and whatnot I think the ivory is the best choice totally on, on you for whatever you want but you could just stop with these three. You don't have to do anything else. It would be very acceptable as an easy lunch function and it would take you minutes to put this together. A lot of the time the crinkle taffeta is very easy to work with. You don't even really have to iron it most of the time. Um, it's supposed to have that kind of texture to it. So you could stop there or you could keep going. And since I'm a more is more kind of girl and I like the over the top everything, uh, I went ahead and found this beautiful menu option. Uh, I, this is on Etsy, so this is a DIY template that you can get. And very easy to customize whatever your menu is going to be. But I like that it had the cherry blossom in it. It was very simple. It matched what we were looking for, I think, in uh, design concepts. And I thought, how pretty would that be if we have this nice kind of... Now, it's not real wood, but it's a melamine plastic charger with kind of a brown wood-ish finish that I found online. Layer that with one of these beautiful ostrich feathers that I found because, you know, we got fans with ostrich feathers and feathers are kind of thing and it's just fun. People could put them in their hair or whatever they wanted. And then a menu at each person's spot and thought, well, this could be really pretty this could be really simple and that's all you need to jazz up the table and it'll keep all of our colors together the brown adds that nice contrast a little something in interesting and you now if you were uh going for farther with this you could get brown shivari chairs brought in with white cushions that would match this perfectly and it would be really nice if you're bringing in chairs but you know if you're bringing in a, a bunch of tables and stuff you might as well get some chairs to go with it and so this is this is a very 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 easy tablescape now the next one this one here is more of a medium tablescape uh, this is again a white sequin linen uh, hard to see in the picture I know but it is a white sequin linen and then just a nice beautiful tall vase with a nice turquoise gel beads which I love working with but that's just a nice pop of color that they offer and then I did not make this graphic myself I found it on the internet but essentially ostrich feathers <laughs> uh, using those as a topper for your centerpiece very pretty very impactful and then again if you have the charger with the ostrich feather and the menu for each guest I think it could look really pretty and this one's a little bit harder to do in the sense that you've got to buy the ostrich feathers but once you start getting the hang of it these types of centerpieces can go together very very quickly because um it's pretty straightforward, but you do need a lot of ostrich feathers to do that. Uh, so the next one, the next, so this is kind of what I would consider the medium tablescape, putting things together. Again, super easy. Um, it's just, a, this one's a little bit more time consuming, but the good news is, is when you're done, these feathers are going to store really easy. <laughs> so the next tablescape I want to show you uh, starts with another crinkle taffeta in the Robin's Egg Blue. Because I think that's beautiful color for the spring soiree. And this is a 
you can call it a centerpiece riser, a tablescape a riser. I've heard them called all sorts of different things, but essentially it's an arch shape and it is metal. They come in white. I've seen them in silver. I've seen them in gold. And I went ahead and played with the graphics just to try to get it to better align with the table here. But this is a nice way to get a uh, taller centerpiece without having to make the full table arch, but you can still kind of get that effect. This is kind of a, um, a way to scale back on budget if you needed to. And I think for a lunch purpose, uh, this could also be very beautiful and dramatic, but it also could be nice for the evening time. Now again, using our urns that we did earlier for cohesiveness with the magnolia, the wisteria, the ivory and cream roses, um, some hydrangea we're going to be adding into this, and then of course some cherry blossom stems. Uh, that's what we're going to use as the bulk of our floral here. Obviously, you're going to make what matches your style and your specific look easier. I just try to uh, get as much stuff from one uh, company when I'm buying uh, floral because that way it's easier to match uh, the ivories and creams because you know that they're all generally going to be around the same color palette. So that's just my personal preference. Totally up to you. Now, I went ahead with a little bit more of a simpler <laughs> uh, arch here, but again, using the magnolia as a lot of the greenery and bending and shaping that. We're going to have some draping wisteria as we see here in the urns, but I also went ahead and added a little bit of draping uh, cherry blossom because I think that is going to be really pretty and kind of tie in our photo booth. A little bit of cream hydrangea, some roses, and obviously this is just my artistic rendering. This isn't exactly to scale or anything, but you get where we're going with this. So now if we go back and you put it on our table, we can take some hydrangea domes, cover up the base Again, takes two seconds to do, very easy. And then how pretty is this gonna look with the beautiful charger, the napkin, the menu card with this customized and a little bit of feather accent. I mean, I I it's I keep saying it's easy and I don't want you guys to think it's not. You could absolutely DIY this. This one's gonna take a little bit longer because there is a little bit more of a learning curve on it. But when you're working with silks, they're very forgiving. And if you choose to work with fresh, you can do that too. It's just a little bit more work. Or you could be like, screw this. I'm not doing it myself. I'll pay somebody and get a local designer to come in and do it. Um, by all means, feel free to share these mood boards with them. I'm sure they'll understand where we're going. And I'm only a DM away if anybody has questions. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this afternoon soiree inspired by the art of the swoon. Uh, I've enjoyed putting this look together. This was a really interesting ball uh, to watch unfold, and I really just liked it from a design point of view. I'll have a link down below uh, that you can get to my Pinterest board that I share all my favorite inspirations I see as well as actual pictures from the Bridgerton series uh, that I found online, because sometimes that's really helpful too. As always, friends, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking around for this. If you want to just get the mood boards to share with a friend, those will be uploaded here shortly, and you can just send the uh, high-level stuff to your friend, your designer, whoever, and I try to do that for all of my Decorate With Me series, so if you want to get the short version of other videos I've done in the past, check out the playlist over here on the left, and uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see more of my upcoming content and my Decorate With Me styles. Until next time. Bye, friends.